today we are sketching this. So this is a night scene. And I know what you're thinking, night scenes are hard. Um, and sort of yes, but only because we think about them too much. We think they're hard. This is still the same process. We still make shapes. We still paint the light. We still layer our watercolours and then restructure at the end. And you know what? I think this looks all right. And I actually enjoyed myself. I hate night scenes just as much as you. They scare me, but I still enjoyed this process. So today I'm going to challenge you to sketch along with me. The reference is linked down below in the description and enjoy yourself as well. As ever, we're going to just start with a simple shape based sketch. So we've got our reference here and we can see it's basically a two point perspective corner. So what I mean by that is we have a kind of middle ground. So we've got the middle here, which is the corner of the street. So we could find the simple shapes here. We've got a rectangle, which is above the door, which is a rectangle. Then we've got uh, a little rectangle again. And then we kind of got this triangle of light, haven't we? So we're just drawing a triangle. And then from this triangle, we've got our lines of perspective. And this is where we can see that down one side, the street goes like so. And down the other side, it goes something like so. And then we can start building everything around this simple perspective that we found. So above here, we've got simple windows again, basically simple windows in perspective. So we can just draw a few of them. But our scene is not about these windows. The scene is rather about this kind of glow in the middle. So just a couple of these windows. And all we want these windows to do is reinforce the busyness and the perspective and we can get very loose and abstract with them. We don't have to be precise. Filling in a bit more space are these lovely trees. So let's start again just with some really simple loose ideas of these trees. And it's difficult actually to see them on the right side. We can see some clear shapes here but over here all we can see is the shape at the bottom where they're silhouetting. But we can finish their tops off, something like that. Nice and simple. Underneath, let's start building in some of this other detail. So we've got these little signs. Then we've got this other sign, which got some words. Well, it is words, but I'm going to just simplify it for now. Same here, we've got a little sign. I'm going to simplify that into a rectangle for now. Then coming down here, we're going to get lost behind these very helpful trees, which suddenly are helping us not have to add in loads of extra detail. Now coming down, we've got some key sort of vertical lines. Those vertical lines just anchor the whole scene. And they suddenly, hopefully, I'm hoping strongly, they'll just make this scene make a whole load more sense because suddenly we'll have these shapes coming forward out of this perspective laden cafe. So we just mirror these shapes on both sides. Under these trees, we can put some of these key verticals. We can find, as we do that, a few of these other details, these little bushes, little shapes. Next little uh, tree, I can say stump, but it's not a stump, it's a, um, what is it? Tree leg. Sometimes when I'm talking, my words totally evade me, as you can tell. Coming forward even further, we got our chap here, little man, simple shape. He's standing next to a bush, which is a little taller than him. And that's and got a little sign in front of it. And there's only a little bit more left to do. And what we're trying to do underneath with all of these shapes is we're trying to define where the light ends. So we've got the bottom of the door, we've got this kind of bush coming up, this next little bush, again, little bush. And then I think that's actually something inside the cafe, but it is where the light is ending. And if we just do the same, over here, we actually can find someone sitting in the cafe. So you can pop them in a little window. And we could even just finish it off with a couple of extra bushes under there. So now we've kind of got these shapes which are defining the bright and the dark parts. And that is where we can move on to our watercolours. So normally, normally we start with the light and that's exactly what we do even in dark scenes, we start with those light and bold and bright colors. And we also still start really nice and loose. So I'm gonna take some nice yellows here. This is a handy yellow medium. I'm gonna start by just popping that in, 
into little blocks, nice and loosely, lots of water, wherever I see that kind of glowing yellow. Now, I'm not worrying about my lines at the moment because these colours are going to blend and merge. What I'm worrying about is where do I see bright glowing areas of yellow? And there's a couple of little extra ones there. Now we've got some fun like bright blues in there, haven't we? I'm going to simplify them to just use a little cobalt turquoise. So underneath these colours, I can sort of add in these little blocks of this cobalt turquoise, kind of bright bluey green. And there's even little bits of that, I feel like little bits of it down here. This is very subjective and basically making it up, but you're allowed to have a sort of subjective idea of where the colours are on your scene. There's also a, a, um, a sign here, which is blue, which I didn't add in earlier. I'm just going to add some colour there and a little bit more glow going this way. And there's some slightly warmer, redder touches as well. So let's just literally take a red and fill in some of those warmer touches using this lovely red colour. And now all we're doing, just trying to suggest this kind of glow that's going to be suffusing our image by starting by painting the light. And I'm just going to now let this glow outwards. Lots of water, keep things soft, let things flow and move. Even in a night scene like this, we still, or even more so than ever before, we want to let things flow, blend and move. We also, don't forget, have this lovely patch of light just here. So I'm going to fill that one in as well. And I missed out this little blue glow coming in there. Few splashes, why not? And we can move on to applying some more dark colours. So I'm going to jump now straight to some sort of neutral darks. I've got a little bit of indigo. Mix that with some quinacridone sienna. Or you might do a sort of ultramarine and burnt sienna or lots of different options. You could just use a Payne's Grey, a Moon Glow. And from that, I'm going to just start blocking in some of these dark areas. I'm still using a watery wash though. What I don't want to do is overdo it straight away and have this dark colour jump down. Because all my page is watery, I don't want it to then jump down, take over the whole image. What I want to do is start that process of adding some depth and darkness to the scene. Not finish it, but start it in this first layer. So just gently wash in some of these lovely deeper neutral tones. And what I'm going to do, of course, is let things blend. So I'm letting these colours seep down, seek up, letting them blend and merge together. We might even add some glow in there as well. So taking some of that quinacridone sienna and just touching it in, letting that sort of push out and create little cauliflowers. And above here, I don't want to do too much. So maybe a few splashes. Just the idea that there is still colour up here, but still, just like we'd normally, leaving plenty of that white paper. Plenty and plenty of white paper to just let things sing. Let the watercolours still have that same lovely bright watercolour effect. The door is going to get a nice quinacridone sienna touch, but I've mixed that quinacridone sienna gently with a little bit of indigo. Um, and then we'll just... Again, let things flow, blend, move. And just defining, like we said, defining the light by the edge of the darkness. Again, keep things soft. Come in, just soften these edges with a nice clean brush. And at the moment, I know it looks like uncontrolled chaos, but that is okay. That is part of the process of watercolors, sketching. It doesn't look great at the start. You need to go through the steps. And this is the loose colour step. This is just where we are making things loose, making it interesting, so we can later adapt and add some uh, some more contrast, some more um, structure and integrity to the image. A little bit more richness of yellows, letting, again, yellow, letting these things glow, blend up, so we're not too overly defined at this stage. And now, I'm just going to let this dry. And when this dried, we will see what we do with our next layer, which will be adding more dark colours, more bold colours, increasing the value in our scene before restructuring it and making some real sense of it by the end. 
So we are now mostly dried and that means we can come in with our next layer of colour. And our next layer of colour is going to be with our smaller brush. And now we're focusing on the smaller shapes, the smaller shapes of those glowing colours initially. And I'm going to make them a little warmer, a little muckier. So I've got my yellow mixed with my red here to create a sort of grungy orange. And we can just find inside the cafe, we can find some internal features like these little lines going backwards and forwards. We can also suggest these kind of little balcony areas, this little glow where there's a seat. We can come in with some bright yellow to suggest some of these lamps. And again, just let things blend, merge, move. There's also some real dark areas, so we could then jump into creating this shadowy area here before coming back in with this lovely turquoise, which will just amp up a little bit. And again, let that flow and move down. Don't keep things too rigid. That's what the pen work is for, for making things a little more rigid. We can add some of our darker colours. I'm going to actually jump straight to the darker colours specifically in this side of the image. And then we'll keep moving across like this, doing light, dark, light, dark. And that way things will stay nice and wet and fluid. And that means that our image won't feel overworked at the end and it won't have too many of those dodgy lines going on. Same bit of warmth up here. See how this warmth kind of extends a little bit. So I'm just gonna add some water to allow my next layer of dark colours to blend, blend and merge. And there we go. And I want to just, again, soften this out as a not overly hard edge. Coming down, we've got the same idea down here. There's light coming through and we get that through the layering effect. We get this glow of yellow coming through our layers of colour. Into the foreground, maybe I'm going to start just adding some cobalt to lift some of these shadows. A little bit of cobalt blue this time. And for me, that really lifts some of these shadows. And we can start finding, again, just simple linear type shapes that allow some of these glows, like this glow on the pavement, to emerge. Same down here, kind of these linear shapes, just showing that there's a pavement edge, something going on here. Going back again, so we've done this, we've done this, now we go back. We find those sort of warmer areas. There's actually quite a lot of bright light here. It's one of the lowest value areas, one of the lightest areas. So I'm not going to do too much, just a little touch here and there of slightly warmer colours. A little bit of our quinacridone sienna to warm up this door as well. And then, of course, let things move. I'm just going to touch in some cobalt blue in a couple of places whilst things are still wet. This is, I've done a video on this. I absolutely love the effect. When you drop in some cobalt blue into dark areas, look how it just lifts it. it literally just lifts it from being boring, murky to being just something a little bit more interesting. Then we move on. So we go to this dark post now, come under here, and then we can start working inside the cafe again. So a little bit of yellow, a little bit of orange, yellow and orange. It's a bit less obvious what's going on back here. So as it becomes less obvious, we need to become less precise and then just fill in these dark areas. Again, just that touch of cobalt. And look at that, just push and lift that shadow so wonderfully. Up here, we've got our tree, hopefully gonna achieve a similar sort of feel. Might even one extra touch on this side little bit of lunar black to just suggest those tree-like textures. And then soften things, blend things, move things, keep it fluid. And I know, I absolutely agree, at the moment it looks like a challenge, doesn't it? A hot mess, uh, really, how is this possibly going to look good at the end? Well, you will see, just by applying a little bit of extra structure to what we've done here, to all these loose and glowing colours, and that's with our pen, that is when things will suddenly just start working. So what we need now is a really dry page and that will enable us to come in with our pen, reaffirm the big shapes and start adding those really little key details to tell much more of the story. Now something to note, when this is now dry, do you see how much lighter it's become? 
So when you are adding dark pigments in watercolour, just remember if it looks too much, it might not be. Um, don't go too far with that, but it still might not be too much because of how much lighter they tend to dry. But we are now ready, with that in mind, we're now ready with our pen again. So I'm now just going to reaffirm these shapes. And this pen is naturally on this watercoloured page. It's naturally going to be a bit bolder. So we need to be careful not to overdo things. And where we want gentle lines, we're going to have to be very gentle indeed. But we can start finding these shapes within shapes. So we've got these kind of panels. So we can make this just more interesting by getting this feel of these panels going up and down. You can see the page is a bit wet there, but that's okay. It's just softening out my lines, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, down here we can just start finding again some of these little areas and maybe even suggesting the writing. You might even, if your writing's better than mine, you might want to literally write what is on these signs. But for me, it's gonna be just suggestions because I know that especially if I try to write, there's a strong chance of me ruining my sketch. And that's just a personal thing from experience. But you do you, if your writing is lovely or you love having writing in your sketches, then add these words. This is a good time to do it. Underneath, we've got darkness, and we've got darkness we can produce. We said that the watercolours have, hatch, have, have hatched. We said the watercolours have dried light, but we can use our ink, we can use hatching, we can use hard pressing, we can go up and down, create bold lines to show that darkness. Down here we might hatch again, for example, because it's nice and dark, it's got much more value down there. Then we want to just reaffirm this kind of edge where the darkness begins. We'll just reaffirm with that bold line coming around and sort of setting the edge of light meets dark. We can hatch in a couple of these shapes, not all of them, but hatching in a couple again. It's just adding a bit more variation into these dark areas. I want to continue, before I come back and start adding details, I want to just continue around and get the rest of my sort of simple shapes feeling good. And I want the rest of the kind of broad contrast, the broad value also. I'd like to be feeling good before I jump on and start doing the other bits of detail, like inside the windows, for example. Over here, it's darker than over here. Higher value on this side. So some hatching gently on one side and more intensely on the other. We'll just show that. We'll pick out our tree again, bringing those leaf-like shapes out a bit more, especially where we can see them and where we've got this lovely glow coming through, we can highlight that with some bold lines. I still can't remember. Oh, trunk, it's come to me, tree trunk. That's what I was trying to say earlier. So we can now make those tree trunks really deep and dark because again, they are the key, just like here, we've got these key verticals, which I actually haven't made bold yet, so well done for reminding me. But just like that, these trunks here are key vertical lines which set the, the scene on the ground, they, they bring it down. And there we are, we're almost done. Maybe just some gentle hatching into these windows. I don't want to make them bold because we've kind of ignored them with our colour. We just sort of had them there as a really loose extra bit. And now it's time to work inside the building. So I'm going to flip my pen over. That means we get a finer line. We still need to be careful, but we're going to have a finer line just by doing that. And now we start doing these little touches which show the things going on inside the building. It's quite a nice touch to make these lines sort of not continuous. If they're not continuous, it feels like we're looking through something, which indeed we are. We're looking through the window. We can find these, said the little shapes, all these little lamps they sort of tell the story of it being inside. We can find little other shapes just going on in the background as well. Perhaps we could even invent some people if we wanted. You, know, you can do whatever you like inside your cafe, inside your building. A couple of little shapes in the background here. And even sometimes just little sort of scratchy marks just suggest something going on inside when, you know, it's okay that you can't really see it, you can't really make it out. Inside here, we've got a couple more shapes. We've got our person, which has been lost a bit. So 
That's fine. We'll turn her into another bush. That's fine. We've got a man here at the front. He's not been lost yet. So we can just reaffirm him with our pen, get his sort of shape in, reaffirm this bush as well. We can keep them as nice, bright, negative space. Even though they're not negative space, they're not bright, they can be there in the front, just abstractly being that kind of negative space. What else have we got? We've got these lovely glowing lights. We can bring in those simple shapes, little circles dangling around. It just creates noise, creates a suggestion of detail. And I think that's almost us done, almost. We just need to finish off this door and then do one last little look around, little look and check if there's anything we'd like to do, which we haven't yet done. So a couple of bits here. Oh, there's more writing here. We can add that kind of abstract suggestion of writing for me and maybe for you it's real writing. We can suggest just another light to match this one over here. And the last bit, I guess, the last bit, I made such a big deal of it with my colours, would be just to suggest some of these kind of curve edges. Just to suggest them. But not more than that. And there we go. So we're ready now to move to the last step. The last step, of course, the finishing touches. We've restructured. The finishing touches are where we add the boldest, brightest touches of colour. So here we might, for example, take our cobalt blue and make these lights sort of glow underneath with that glow, with that blue. We might use it on a couple of these little circles we added, and we might alternate that with the yellow, which is a little bit more realistic for what's going on. Might add some splashes around there also to give that same effect, maybe even in here to give that same effect. Inside the cafe, maybe we just use this as an opportunity to double down on a couple of the, the shadowy areas. Just layering in watercolours is really important for creating that depth, that value, because of how much things dry and then become paler when they dry. Similarly, maybe we just double down a little bit in these trees, make them dark and light, just to give them a bit more shape. Up here, we could add a little bit more of a glow. We don't want to do too much though. So before long, we need to just step back, give our painting a little bit of time to try. And then if we wanted to come back and do something extra, we could. And I think just like that, that has to be the decision made that my sketch is finished. If you enjoy this kind of sketching, this sketching style, then subscribe, leave a comment down below. Do you hate night scenes as much as I do? They definitely take a lot of thinking and they can feel like they're going wrong all the way until the end. And then, of course, you can join me as well in my free course. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.